Today we'll be doing an overview of EagleSoft. I am on the latest version, uh, version 21. This is our front office home screen. We also have a clinical home screen. So for those operatories uh, in the clinical area, this would be the kind of the home base, either that or the schedule. You can also hit the F2 key on your keyboard and it'll bring up the text. So this will tell you exactly where these pictures will take you if you click on them. We have the ability to clock in and out and keep track of that with reports in EagleSoft. We can view by different modes. So there's also an integrated mode if you prefer to view your modules that way. And we have various icons that you can customize your toolbar with. So if you right click in the toolbar and hit customize, these are the available toolbar buttons you can simply add to your toolbar. And these are the current toolbar buttons. So you can simply click and remove if that's not an icon you want on your particular workstation. And these toolbars are customizable per workstation. You can also hide the text so you can have just the icon show if you'd like. We also have under file, we have the preferences. So this is where the defaults for your software live. So there's a general, there's patient defaults, insurance defaults. There's also accounting defaults here. Statements. You can enable or disable spell checking. Employer, we also have schedule defaults. One thing to point out is within these preferences, anything you see with an asterisk is going to mean it is workstation specific. Printing here. If you're going to use e-services, this is where that setup is. Your alerts, perio charting, the clinical chart module, default settings, uh, quick picks, which, which are also in the clinical module, imaging defaults, x-ray, sensor, video capture, scanner defaults, all within this window here. Any interfaces that you may be using, your smart doc defaults, so you can pick what you would like to automatically save into the smart doc. And then we also have the IntelliCare alert uh, default settings as well. Also under file, we have your printer administration. So this is where you'll pick your printer for each of these particular um, modules in the software. You can also hide your toolbars or hide your front office screen if you'd like. We also have the log off and the exit. And I do like to point out that it's important to log off of EagleSoft when you are done for the day or when you leave your workstation to hit that log off key. Once you hit the log off key, then you'll be able to exit. Avoid simply just Xing out. Logging off will actually log you out of the software. Under activities, you have various activities um, that you can perform. These activities do have icons on the toolbar. You can also view them um, and access them on the home screen as well. There are various ways to do the same thing with an EagleSoft and you'll find that um, and you'll determine which is the best and easiest way for you. Under list is where you're basically going to find a list of information. So you have providers and staff. So this is where all your team members um, reside. This is where you would go to add a new team member your list of referrals. So this is where you would enter in information for your referral sources. 
and your referral recipients, list of insurance companies, employers. We know that EagleSoft attaches um, benefit plans to the patient by the employer, and then the insurance company is then attached to that employer. Your standard fees, so your master standard fees would be here. If you are in contract uh, with any insurance companies and they give you their allowed fee schedule list, this is where those would be and you would create them from there. Coverage book list as well. Your service code list that you can search by service code. ADA code description or service type. We also have exploding codes. So exploding codes are created um, and customized within your office during your trainings. And these are a group of codes that are commonly used together. So we create one code, which is called the exploding code. And within that code, we actually attach all codes that would typically go with that service. IntelliCare are customizable intelligent alerts, letters. So this would be your list of letters. You can also create letters from there. The practice information. So this is your practice name, address, um, any kind of identification information here. Preferences for the office. So who the main preferred dentist is and who the um, preferred hygienist is and the default recall frequency, your messages as well for your statements, treatment plans. Um, you would go ahead and set those up here. We also have um, document groups. So for your smart doc, you can save files into document groups to keep your um, smart docs clean and organized. You can create new document groups as well. We have our auto notes. So these are your note templates for your clinical notes or narratives, um, you know, any consents you wanna put in here. So this is all um, created and customized by you for your office. And then there's also smart notes, a uh, list of smart notes here. That is a new feature with version 20. So smart no notes are prompts um, that you would uh, enter within the auto note. So this will give you a drop down list of choices um, and prompt you to answer the question within the auto note. Medical history form. So EagleSoft does have a default medical history form. You can customize your forms. And you are able to lab track uh, within EagleSoft. You're able to um, write and print prescriptions in EagleSoft as well. We also have an electronic service called ePrescriptions where um, you can send the prescription directly to the pharmacy. Your on schedule setup is where you're going to customize uh, and name your office chairs, your appointment types. You can design templates for the perfect day. General setup is going to have um, messages. It's going to have all your payment types. You'll also have adjustment types, excuse me. So you'll name your adjustment types, account types, um, also patient alerts, medical alerts, and account alerts. So if you need to create a new patient alert, you could come in here, create a new alert, and you can also attach a picture indicator as well that will show up on the schedule. 
And then you can also create uh, discounts um, if you'd like to attach to patients as well. Security profiles, this is um, the default. So each team member will have a security profile assigned to them, which will determine what they can and can't access in the software. These can also be customized. And that's it for lists. Under reports is where you're going to find all of your reports. So there's over 200 reports in Eaglesoft, and they are categorized here. You can create um, your favorites, so the reports you like to look to look at on a daily basis. Um, you can bundle them in my my favorites, or you can bundle them in quick reports. So you don't have to go searching through the list. But there are over 40 financial reports in here. Um, for example, some are um, accounts receivable by responsible party, and you can filter these as well. Okay. Online is where you're going to get um, access to your resources. So, like I said before, there are multiple ways to do, um, you know, one thing in Eaglesoft. So your online is going to give you access to your frequently asked questions, your live help, which is a live chat for support, email support, uh, remote support. If you are subscribed to KC Cloud, which is a patient education system, which provides videos, animations, printouts, um, you would access it through there. We also have an integration with Auto SDS. So if you're subscribed to that electronic service, um, it will automatically uh, save and document your safety data sheets for you. And then the e-services websites, if you subscribe, we also have some Patterson websites and our partner websites as well. Utilities is basically um, system maintenance. So you probably won't be using this a lot, but you can purge things, um, mass delete duplicate insurance companies, mass delete treatment plans, just to name a few. Your mass updates, if you need to do a CDT utility update, um, if you need to update your global employer preferences, you can do those things through here. If you forget to reset your insurance balances when processing your end of month or end of year, you can do that from here as well. So various different maintenance items, um, in this in this menu here. This window we already talked about help is another way to get to support. So there are user guides, new feature guides, um, and you can also get to your live help FAQ and email support. So from this area as well, this is your um, icon or picture on the front office screen, you can access the FAQ from here which the FAQ I call your Google for Eaglesoft. So you can go in here, type a keyword, uh, a question, or an FAQ number, and get results here. You can also do, like I said, your live chat. And then if you call the Patterson Technology Center, which is our support center, if they need to remote into your workstation, you can um, utilize this here as well. So just to review a few items up here on the toolbar, um, person is going to be your person list. So this will include any patients entered into the software, any policy holders. Um, policy holders do not have to be patients and responsible parties as well. This is where you can also go to add a new patient. Okay, this will be your new person screen. Uh, icon here for the account. So you can click on here to go into an account. Anywhere in Eaglesoft you see a blue word that's underlined, that's a hyperlink. So that's going to take you to a list of information. So this is where we get to the account ledger. End of day for end of day processing. You can also get to your end of month and end of year um, 
processing as well from here. And with version 21, you can automate, um, you can schedule when you want um, to do your end of period processing, or you can choose to do it uh, manually as well. Your smart doc is the electronic filing cabinet. So every patient has a smart doc. The practice has a smart doc and in the practice's smart doc, um, your end of month reports and your end of year reports do automatically save in there. But every patient, uh, every team member and the practice have their own smart doc. So this is where you can um, scan in uh, letters, um, treatment plans can be saved in here. So anything that you feel needs to be saved within that patient's electronic record, you can scan into the SmartDoc. You can also create letters from SmartDoc um, and attach uh, images, so x-rays or intraoral photos as well. So if you click on SmartDoc, You can come here to letters and you can create letters. We also talked about those document groups and this is where those are located in the smart doc. Treatment plan, we can access the treatment plan from here. There are various other ways within that patient record and the schedule, you can access that as well. The recall wizard is going to allow you to um, run your recall reports and print um, postcards, what have you, send emails for your recalls. In contact is a um, digital communication system. So instead of having to run reports, you can simply use the in contact list and not have to print off reports. Money Finder is a great way to query your software uh, for specific information. So if you wanna query your software for anyone who has um, an implant treatment planned, right? So you can go ahead and type in the, the criteria and then you can search your, your database for all patients who have a proposed implant. That's just one example. Claims will take you to your insurance claims window so you'll, you'll be able to view your um, submitted, unsubmitted, open, in process claims um, for primary and secondary insurance. You can also view pre-authorizations. Statement wizard, uh, when you wanna run your, your monthly statements or weekly statements or what have you, you would use the statement wizard for that. Again, we have another reports icon here. And let's see here. On schedule is just another way to get to the schedule. Live help is basically just going to be your live chat. And then we talked about the logging off. So we'll go ahead and click to the schedule next. And we do notice on the schedule, lots of different colors. So we are viewing this schedule here by appointment types. So we have various appointment types set up within the system. So we know exactly what this person is coming in for. Rodney Brown is scheduled for two crowns. So our crown and bridge appointment types are yellow. We have our Profi appointments set as green. Fillings and restorations are blue. So this is all customizable um, to your practice as well. You can also view the schedule by provider colors. So each provider would get a color assigned. You can click on this and see where the provider needs to be um, during the day. So we see Dr. Young is green. This is his column. He has a couple hygiene checks to do. Same with Dr. Morgan here, who's blue. We see Diane is pink. If Diane comes in during the day or in the morning and looks at her schedule and sees that she has um, a hygiene appointment in there that is blue or um, yellow, she knows that she needs to go in there and either 
if this is a Deborah only patient, then I either put them in Deborah's schedule or change the provider so she knows that she gets the credit for that appointment. So it's always a good idea to kind of toggle back and forth between the uh, appointment type view and the provider color view. You can also change the time units at any time. You can either just drag and drop. You can move the appointment if you need to by dragging it and dropping it. If you need to move it to a different day, you can drag and drop it to the queue, or you can right click and hit move, and then right click and paste. You can also come up here and click move as well. Uh, another way to increase or decrease the appointment duration would be to double click on the appointment. And you could go ahead and change the duration right here. So a few different ways to do that. We also have what are called customizable panels available. So if we look at the calendar, which is called go to day, we can actually pin it to the side of the schedule or we can unpin it. So if your push pin here is sideways, once you hover away, you'll see a little tab on the side of the schedule. And if you push the pin down, you'll dock that panel so that it remains on the schedule there. So pretty simple. If you X out, you close it out of the screen entirely. However, you can get it back um, from your toolbar up here just by clicking on the calendar. Yours may say go to. I just simply renamed mine calendar. So once you click on it, it will populate here and then just make sure that push pin is docked. That's the same thing with the appointment queue. We also have a schedule notes. So your little icon up here, schedule notes, you can dock as well um, if you push the pin. So the schedule notes are, are helpful if you need to, um, you know, jot down little notes for the, for the team to see regarding that day. So maybe you have a lunch and learn scheduled um, that day or just any kind of note that needs to be communicated and that way everyone can um, dock this or hide it um, with the little tab over here to take a look at it. You can also see your production. So if you have set up your goals for each provider within their edit provider uh, screen by going to hours, you can set up a goal. That goal will calculate here, and then whatever you have scheduled for the day will total and calculate here. So from all the appointments, whatever services are scheduled, you'll be able to see that there. If you go into the setup here, this will be your schedule, um, your setup, and what displays within your appointments as well. So right now we see we have the patient first name, middle initial, last name, you know, any appointment notes, home phone, this is all showing up in the text here. So if there's anything else you want to uh, see there, you can come up here to this field and go to the drop down, pick what you want to display and hit insert. You can also, you know, space and tab. Uh, if there's something you don't wanna see, just simply go in and remove it. This right here is showing us our goals. So this is telling us we want to display what's scheduled and our goal. Double book, triple book information. So anything, uh, anytime a provider is double booked, we see yellow on the side of the schedule here. When we're triple booked, we see red. So we know at some point doctor is going to be in you know, three spots at this time frame. So there are one, two patients scheduled in his chair, and then he's doing a hygiene check over here. So you can see that when you look at the side of the schedule. And you can change these colors too. It's, it's, there's so much uh, customization allowable in EagleSoft. The numbers of columns that are showing on your screen. So we have four chairs. I want four columns to show. 
and then what indicators are going to show, you know, within that appointment, you can pick and choose from here. You can also um, customize your print and your month at a glance display, which we'll go and we'll, we'll chat about that month at a glance as well. So speaking of the month at a glance, we have the day at a glance here, which is showing you your day. You can view the week at a glance. So for each day, depending on how many chairs you have, you'll be able to see your appointment types and where you have openings. And then your month at a glance. So your month at a glance is a great summation of the month as it stands at that particular moment you're looking at that. So you'll be able to see your totals at the bottom uh, which is pretty cool. And whichever day is selected, you'll see those range totals right here. So in that customization option in that setup that I just showed you, you can determine, um, you know, what color you want your text here. So as we have it right now, if we are at 100% of our goal or more, the text will be green. If we're at 99% or less of our goal, it's red. So we can look and just glance at this day and know, hey, we are at or above goal. Um, these days need some help. So that's stuff you can customize, but I really like that month at a glance view. Up here again, uh, let's go back to day at a glance. You can move forward one day, go back to today, move backwards one day. Uh, seven days, seven days forward. So that is your calendar here. The locate button is a great tool. If a patient calls up and they need to know when their appointment is, or they want to know when their last appointment was, um, you can see everyone in the account, current appointments down here, past appointments here. So if you are searching for someone who calls on the phone, I would just click anywhere blank in the schedule, click on this locate button. You can search the name or you can just type in the last name. And it will show the appointments for the entire account. It'll show the appointment type as well. You can view the appointment to see what exactly it uh, includes, okay. You can also go to the appointment as well. You can delete it from here um, if you need to, if they, you know, they're on the phone right now and they say, no, I'm not gonna come in for that appointment, you can delete it. We have the quick fill list, which is um, an appointment uh, short list, an easy way to track your canceled or um, appointments that need to be rescheduled. So it alleviates post-it notes. So you can more efficiently track those cancellations and your sooner if possible patients here. And you can also filter through and edit your search criteria as well. So if somebody calls up to cancel their appointment, you can right click. And if you hit delete this appointment, you're going to get this window here. Now you would pick if it's failed, canceled, or neither, which would be, you know, maybe the office had to cancel their appointment. It's defaulted to add it into that quick fill list. If you don't want it to go in there, you can uncheck it. And then you can also add a note as to why the appointment is being removed from the schedule, and then you can even add that note to the account. So if there is someone who's going through this quick fill list, you know, on a weekly basis, maybe trying to fill openings, they can go into this quick fill list, and if they're searching for profies, they can come down here, filter it by profies, um, and you can get your information from here. The notes will show up over here. Okay, so the quick fill list is quite helpful. The appointment queue, I have it down here. This is where you're going to, if you have a patient who needs to move to another day, if you right click and hit move, 
it'll move them right into this appointment queue. Or like I said, you can drag and drop over there as well. Or you can select them and hit move up here. Everything, um, all three of those options are just gonna put them right in that appointment queue. You can go to the day they need to reschedule and you can either drag and drop it out of that queue or you can find the time on the schedule and right click paste from moved appointments and select the patient or you can select the time and come up here and hit paste so various different ways to do the same thing when we come back to today we see those appointments are removed from our schedule today you can also schedule family appointments so you could go anywhere on the, the a blank spot on the schedule, come up here to the top, create a family appointment, type in the family name, and from there, you can select who you want. I actually didn't mean to select her. I want to select Charles Abbott because he has um, multiple family members. You'll go ahead and select which family members you want to schedule, and you can also select the appointment type. So if it's a family with, you know, a few children that need to come in for cleanings, you know, you can go ahead and just schedule them all for cleaning. So once I have the appointment type, I can hit save, and what it does, it puts them in the queue for family appointments. You can go find your day and your time, and you can just drag and drop them over where they need to go. Very easy to do uh, family appointments. You can also create a block from this uh, icon as well. This icon has a drop down here so you can do multiple things with it. You can also just create a quick fill appointment, uh, an unscheduled appointment as well. We have several indicators again on that schedule. Um, we have our arrival indicator. So when the patient arrives, we simply right click, set next arrival indicator means they're here. Once they go back into the chair, right click again, and then it turns it green. You also have your confirmation status. So if you see a question mark, you know they're unconfirmed. You can right click, change the confirmation status. You can also click here and there is a confirmation status. I might have removed it from my toolbar, but you can also confirm um, via the toolbar as well. Okay, there it is. I moved it. Confirm appointment or if you left a message, right? Several options there. You also can see the patient photos. So if you do take photos in your practice, uh, we have a pill here. This means that patient takes pre-medication. Uh, this is an IntelliCare alert, so it's a birthday reminder. So various icons you can have display uh, any patient alerts you put in there, right? We have the glove here, which means allergic to latex. So various options that we can show as long as we mark these um, in the setup here. Again, you have your right click function on the appointment. You can print an appointment card from here. So various options you could do from here or from the toolbar. Quick access also to uh, other parts of EagleSoft. So if we simply highlight the patient, we can click chart, get right to the chart. Okay. We can highlight the patient, click note history, go right into their um, their notes, their clinical notes. We can also click the patient and you know go right into patient history, medical history. Okay. And so on and so forth.
scheduling an appointment is very simple. You can do it, of course, multiple ways, but if you find the time that you want to schedule it for, you can double click. You could then type in your patient's last name here and hit tab if you spell it correctly. Or if there's a patient ID number you want to type in, you can do that. You can also come to the patient list here and start typing in the last name. Okay. Select the appointment type. What are they coming in for? And you would come down here. You can either add a new service or if they have proposed treatment that you're adding, you could click that add treatment. Um, or you could just, like I said, come right here to add service. You can utilize your exploding codes. So if she's coming in for an adult profi exam and for bite wings, we could simply click that one code and it populates all three items. And we'll go ahead, we make sure that the provider is correct. If we need to change it, we can right click and choose the correct provider. And we can also see that the duration is one hour. If you need to change it, you can do that here. Once you hit save, we'll see in the schedule that our appointment is scheduled. However, I got my time units a little mixed up there. So I'll hit save and we can see we're in the schedule here. So now I take a look. We're in Deborah's column and she is yellow. So we are good to go. Another way you can schedule an appointment is you can click on the time and you can come up to the top and hit create appointment there and do the same thing. All right, let's take a look at the chart. So click on the patient once, click the chart icon. This will take you right into that patient's chart. We can see our images on the side here, just as a preview. Very easy to tell uh, what the status is of these services. So blue um, is existing work, anything red is proposed. Now these can be customized and changed to your office's preferences. Anything completed, um, you know, you can make a different color. A lot of offices like to make completed work green. Um, but here we have a light blue, which is an existing, and then the dark blue actually is what we have completed here in the office. Our conditions are going to show up gray. So if we have an, a missing tooth here, number 16, and I click that condition, it shows up gray. So very easy to chart. If we're charting existing work, we could click on that existing drop down button here and we'll say number six has an existing composite just on the incisal. And then if we want to propose treatment, we can hit proposed, select the tooth, select the surfaces, hit OK, and now we have proposed. So these buttons over here are called our quick pick buttons, which makes proposing treatment uh, a lot more efficient. Under these main buttons, so the main button is a code and underneath the main button, you'll get drop down menus of other codes pertaining to that particular main quick pick button. So we do customize these uh, to your office as well. You can also select all and create a primary dentition if you'd like. Uh, you can do a mixed dentition. Okay. So you can select all, clear all, just all upper. So if you're proposing an upper denture or a lower denture, if you're doing quadrant work, you can do that as well. You can see insurance information from the chart here. Um, you can hide the ledger and you'll see a tally over here of the last uh, radiographs that were taken and walked out. You can also get right to that service code list from here as well. 
Once you hit save, you can create a treatment plan right from here by clicking that treatment plan button in the bottom. We can hit new plan, give it a name and date. there's any notes you need to put in there. Once you do that, you'll get your list of all your proposed services. From there, you can click what you wanna put in the treatment plan. And once we have it in here, you will see if you do have any insurance uh, fee schedules applied uh, to this patient or any insurance uh, estimations, you'll see your standard fee, any adjustment from the insurance what the final fee is, right? And then um, what the estimated insurance would, would pay. So once you have that in there, you can go ahead and hit process. Once you process it, if you'd like to print it for the patient, you can select this but, uh, box here and select your treatment plan. You can also do a pre-authorization, submit a pre-authorization if you would like from here as well. Now, if you want to create um, a treatment plan that is including phases, so multiple uh, services, you can do that as well. So we'll go ahead and I'll just select all here and I'll go ahead and make one treatment plan, but I will phase it or stage it. So let's just say we want to do our now these already are staged from a different treatment plan, but we can start over. So we'll say we wanna do the, um, the composite here first, and we'll do the crown second, and at that seat appointment, third, we'll do the other uh, filling, and then lastly, we'll do the root canal. And then I'll click this hashtag and it'll put them right into order so that when we print it, it's gonna go ahead and phase these and subtotal each phase. So very easy to phase or stage your um, treatment plans. So now when we look at our treatment plan, we can see our phase number, we can see the service and the subtotal for the phase. You see phase two, phase three, and then phase four. And then down on the bottom, we'll see the totals. You can also have the patient sign the treatment plan as well. From your chart, you can also access the perio chart. You can get it from this right drop down menu here, or you can simply come up and select the icon up here as well. So the perio chart will look like this. You can chart mobility, probing depth, gingival margin. The clinical attachment level will automatically calculate. You can also chart mucogingival junction, bleeding and separation. You can also chart furcation. You can do a comparison of up to three exams. You can also see a comparison graph of up to three exams, and you can decide which exams you can pick them. You can also look at a paragraph from the current um, day's charting as well. So depending on what you wanna see, you can go ahead and select, you know, gingival margin, mucogingival junction, probing depth, or you can select them all. You can also print these for the patient if you'd like to do that, or if you need to print and send to insurance, if you're not using the uh, electronic attachments, you can do that as well. You can change your path. So you'll see the process or the path um, is defaulted down here. If there is a different path you want to follow, you can go through and change it here. Um, this is defaulted in those file preferences that we talked about um, near the beginning of the, uh, the video. We also have within these drop down integration buttons, 
you can review the medical history from here. This is where you can get to the advanced imaging module within EagleSoft. Um, so that is integrated right in to the software. You don't have to bridge an imaging software. It's right here. Okay. You can also take your intraoral images as well. Okay. We can also change patients. So if we want to view another patient from here, or we can get back to that edit patient screen from there or from this snowman with the pencil in his head as well. We can get into that uh, screen here and within this screen. I think the preferences is important. Um, because this is going to show you your preferred dentist, your preferred hygienist, and then the recall frequency, which I encourage um, my hygienist to make sure that this is accurate so that your recall reports are accurate. So if this is a three month recall patient, I ask them to go into the preferences and change that information there. This is also where the pre-med can be checked off too. Now we can take a look at the account screen. So if we go into the account, we can easily do a walkout on this patient. So for services that were completed today, we can come here to walkout. And you may or may not have the back staff posting to walk out, which would then place a check mark into the services that they actually did. If they're not, you would go ahead and check off what was actually performed today. And that would bring it right into the walkout. You would see your insurance estimations, your patient portion, if there's any due. And you would also see on the bottom here if there is a payment due for this walkout. Now, if there is a payment due for this walkout and you're getting that payment today, you're going to take that payment right here at this add payment button. If you need to make an adjustment for today, you will do that from here. EagleSoft does line item accounting. So if you're taking your payment from here or your adjustments, it's going to apply it right to those services in the walkout first. If you take the payment from this account payment button, it's going to apply that payment to the oldest non-insurance balance first by default. Now you can change that, but it's just a lot easier to train your staff and yourself to take the payment from this button up here. You can also edit the service. So if you need to change um, the service date, if you forget to do a walkout, and you come in the next day, you can change the service date. You can change the provider here. Um, you can also uncheck submit on insurance. So if it is a service, maybe you're redoing, you can uncheck that so it doesn't go to insurance. And then you can also change the fee here and even what the insurance is estimating if you needed to do that. You also have this button if you want to print the walkout statement, you can check this and print that for the patient. Once you hit save, it'll ask you to process the walkout. And when you do that, your insurance claim screen will come up and you can go ahead and submit that claim. If you look at your insurance claim screen, you'll see the bottom has the services. If you need to add a narrative, you can do that here. If you have narratives in an auto note, you can go ahead and access your auto notes from here. And let's just say we have a crown narrative. And you can add that. Um, depending on how you're submitting, if you're submitting electronically, you would obviously have this checked here. You can also take a quick glance at patient details and insurance information here if you'd like to do that. And then you can hit OK. I changed my printer, which I didn't mean to do, but so that's how you would do a, a simple walkout. Now, when we look at the account screen, um, we do see colors in here. Let me switch patients so we can look at more colors. It's kind of like the chart ledger where it is color coded. So anything in blue is going to be an open insurance claim. 
So I have an open insurance claim still. Anything in red is a payment and anything in black is a, a note or closed claim. You can also filter your ledger. So if you come down here, if you have multiple people on the account, if you wanted to see just for Janice, you can click on her filter ledger, patient items only and apply. Then you'll just see everything for Janice. You can also run a report. You can also show payments as one entry, or you can show them um, distributed as well. So just depending on how you wanna see those, those payments here, which it's not wanting to change on me here. So let's go back here. Okay. So if you show the distributed payments, it'll go ahead and take that main, um, that one payment and divvy it up between services, or you can just show them as one entry, one payment. We also have dockable panels in here as well. So we can see um, over here, these are action buttons. So we can see the account balance uh, activity. So if you want to grab the top and the dockable panels here, we can see the arrows are gonna highlight uh, a blue um, area in the screen. So if we release it there, that's where our dockable panel will remain. So if you wanted to move it somewhere else, you could certainly do that. Um, you could even change the, um, the dimensions of it as well. So we have account balance, you have account activity to see when the last payments were made. You can also unpin these and just kind of keep those hidden over to the side if you want or you could simply click here. You can do a smart claim. So if for some reason you do need to uh, re recreate an insurance claim, you could simply highlight your service, hit smart claim, and you can recreate that insurance claim from there. You can also do a smart invoice. So if you need to um, give a receipt or if a patient wants, um, a ledger or a copy of all the work that they've done for this year. You, know, you can go through that ledger, highlight you know all the, the payments, all the services, and you can do a smart invoice for them um, if they want that. Also within the account, we have this patient information up here and insurance information as well. You can right click in this gray area um, and you can also get a drop down list as well. Once you have an insurance payment come in, you would click insurance payment here and any open claims you have will be up here. So you can select your claim. It'll show your services on the bottom. If you need to view the claim, you can certainly view the claim and then you can enter the payment for here. And once you make that insurance payment, it will close your claim. If you get a check in the mail or someone comes in just to make a payment on the account, you would click this account payment here. And any open um, or unpaid transactions will show up in the list. So if they come in and they give you a you know, $500 payment, it will automatically try to put that $500 payment um, towards the oldest non-insurance balance first. So whatever that might be, you can certainly come in here and zero that out and disperse that money to where it is exactly you want that to go. So say I want 400 of it to go to this service 
and then maybe I want, you know, 100 to go here. So you can do that with this with line item accounting. As long as this distribute button here is clicked, you can distribute that money by line item, by patient, or by provider. The line item will allow you to put it right to that particular service, which is great. So that's the account. Uh, one other thing I did want to show you was the um, note section a little more in depth here. So from the note history, we can look at our note ledger. So the top is um, all of our past notes. You can also increase or decrease the font size. You can double click on the note and it'll expand it down here on the bottom, which here you can also increase the font if you'd like. You can filter your notes as well. So if you only want to see, um, you know, account notes, uh, you can just check the account and filter your notes. You can also put a date range in there as well. If you want to add a new note, we just simply click this new up here. You can also get that from um, this area here as well. So you can edit note, delete note, create new note. Um, you can also get from the icon here. If you're creating a chart note or a clinical note, you want to make sure this is on chart note. If you're creating an account note, you want to make sure it's an account note. Uh, you can go ahead and change the colors of your notes if you want. You can link a note to a tooth number or a surface. And then you also have your auto notes. So if you're doing a crown prep, if you have your auto notes in here, it's really going to make your uh, documentation a lot more efficient, uh, accurate, and, and definitely um, faster. So you pick your anesthetic, your carpules given, and these, of course, again, are all customizable. So this is all information that's entered in by you um, or your staff. And then you could go into the note to make any, you know, changes as needed. Okay, remove anything um, and then you can save the note. So that is your note history. And we can see over here the note type. So chart note, recall note, you know, account note. It's nice to be able to keep these clean in case you do need to send your account notes, maybe to a collection agency you don't mistakenly have any clinical notes in in there as an account note. Um, so you won't be, you know, doing any HIPAA violation there. So with EagleSoft, um, we do have available what's called fast check-in. So fast check-in is a, a electronic way that your patients can complete their registration forms, their medical history forms, any uh, financial policies maybe you have or consents or, you know, your HIPAA forms. Um, you could use a tablet, a, a laptop or a kiosk. And once the patient arrives, um, you can have them, you know, go ahead and enter in their information and it'll sync right back into EagleSoft. Um, our partners, such as Revenue Well, Opera DDS and Solution Reach all offer the ability to do online forms. So you can send a link uh, in a text, an email, or a welcome packet, or even have it, you know, on your website. So they can fill out those forms prior to coming into the office and then have them sync right back into EagleSoft as well. Um, so those are some options. We do have options for, you know, electronic claims, real-time eligibility, electronic statements, electronic prescriptions, um, you know, recall, so on and so forth. We have quite a, a, a portfolio of, of services for you. Um, so this was just a quick overview of, of the entire um, EagleSoft program and what it has to offer. So just wanted to give you a look into it and stay tuned for our next video.